Okay, we're going to go over Luke 21 and 36. A lot of people have incorrect understanding on this verse. It says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. First of all, we need to understand what was he talking about when he said all these things. Well, in the two verses above it, it tells you, it says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfighting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that that day come upon you unawares. Okay, did he say that that day wasn't going to come upon you? No, he said it was. But the, the key is unawares, it's not being able to be aware of it. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape. Okay, the key word here is escape. What does this word escape mean? Well, let's go to its roots. It's a Greek word. Um, 1628. And I pull it up down here. And it means to... It's from 1537 and 5343. To flee out, escape, flee. Okay. Now, it's a Greek word, ek fugo. And all this right here is, is just a preposition on the beginning of the word, ek. And uh, it's kind of like just putting uh, a prefix. It's a prefix on front of word but this right here is the the root the main literal root word and to escape flee out okay so we see right here to escape flee out is it has nothing to do with disappearing uh, just leaving the world okay let's go to the root five three four three And it is fugo. Remember, I told you ek and then fugo. It's the same. This is the root fugo. Apparently, a primary verb to run away, literally or figuratively. See, it has more to do with repentance and not so much uh, just getting out of here. In fact, it doesn't have nothing to do with get out of, getting out of here. It has to do with repentance because, like, as a snare shall it come on them that face that dwell on the face of the earth. And he said, by the cares, uh, be, take heed that your heart be no, not overcharged with their fighting or drunkenness or cares with this life. So you're fleeing away, you're repenting from them cares of this life, from being uh, drunken with the world. By implication, to shun. Okay, here's where people get confused. By analogy. Uh, an analogy is using two different subjects to try to relay a message. Okay, but it uses the word vanish. Okay, a lot of you are going to be confused by that. But here's one thing you need to know straight off, and this will help the confusion. An analogy, if this is saying by analogy to vanish, that means it's not the definition. It's an analogy. Okay, why would they give an analogy to vanish? Escape, flee away. Okay, so I'll help explain that. The word fugo, it means to escape, flee away. Now, um, if it means to escape, flee away, we should be able to find escape or flee somewhere else in the New Testament that will clear up what this word actually means. So we could look up flee, or actually I have a place already marked. It's in Matthew 10.23. This will help clear it up. But when they persecute you in this city, flee. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. Okay, there it is. Fugo. A primary verb to run away, literally or figuratively, by implication, by implication to shun, by analogy, to vanish, escape, flee away. Okay, now let's use the analogy here in this sentence and let's see if it makes sense. But when they persecute you 
in this city, flee ye, or vanish ye into another. No. It doesn't mean to vanish into another. It means to run away. Now, but why would they give an analogy? Well, analogy uses two different subjects to try to help give clear understanding on a, a different subject. So, like I said, it's not the definition. So, how does it help explain? Because, like in this, when you flee from one city, you're not there in that city anymore. You've left it. You've repented from it. You've turned from it. And that's why... Uh, Vanish was given as an analogy because of a non-existence to that particular thing. And, and, and see, repentance is the same thing. When you turn away from something, you don't go back to it, and it's as though you're, you don't live in the same manner, you don't act in the same manner, you don't, uh, you're not uh, being conformed to this world, so in a way you're leaving it. And it has more to do with repentance. Let me change this back to King James. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another, not vanish into another. For verily I send to you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel. Seeing that word escape and flee, they're the same thing. They have nothing to do with vanishing or disappearing. So it's... A lot of people don't know how to read the, the Strong's. They look at this by analogy. Oh, there's the definition. But no, it's not. It's not. Uh... It's just in an analogy. An analogy uses two different subjects. That means this subject right here is not this subject. It is not, it doesn't have, have, it doesn't mean to run away. It doesn't mean to flee from. It, it's just an analogy given. And I explained how that, why that analogy was given. It's just like this, but when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. If you're not in one city, you're not there anymore. And vanish was given as an analogy to try to show you uh, like just a, a, a similar properties that would help you to understand you're not in this place anymore, you're in another. Okay, and, and that's the same thing with like, see the spirit uh, never leads you out of the battle, it leads you into the battle. We, we are always delivered unto death for Christ's sake. They use that... A passage of Philip as an example of the rapture but when it says uh, the spirit caught away Philip the spirit didn't disappear Philip out of the earth the spirit moved him in the spirit to another place to preach the gospel that means he moved him out of that situation into the battle again because that's the way the spirit always does it always leads you uh, we're always delivered unto death for Christ's sake. Because we have to die to ourselves. We go through the baptisms of Christ, and as we die to ourselves, we're being caught up to God. We're being more caught up to God. As the more deaths we are to self, the closer we're getting to, to Christ. We're going through Christ's baptisms. So you're baptized into Christ's baptisms. Um... I could keep going on this. I hope this clears up some matters. God bless.